I'm Dan Roberts, we're here in the forest below Champery, Switzerland, and this is the Fox 38 versus the RockShox Zeb. Bigger is better is a mantra that you hear a lot these days, and while size might be important to some people, maybe it's what you do with it that counts. Looking back to the inception of the EWS some seven years ago, bigger is definitely better in that regard. Wheel size has grown, frame robustness is up, and travel has increased to tickle the undercarriage of free ride and downhill bikes. Many consumers now forgo in that quiver of bikes for one bike to do it all. Speed is up too with races and your average Joes alike going faster than ever before and doing it all on this single bike that's designed to go up the hills as well as hurtle back down them. So then we're all around bigger and this year Fox and RockShox applied that mantra and gave us two new fork offerings. Both of these sit at the top of the travel tree for single crown forks for their respective brands, with only the Fox 40 and the RockShox Boxer having more travel. Both are aimed at enduro racing and heavy hitting riding, and with their long travel stats, they've had to be in some changes compared to the Lyric and 36 to help them cope with these intentions. Both have stanchion diameters up at 38 millimeters, and in the case of the Fox 38, have travel options at 180 mil travel, and in the case of the RockShox Zeb, have options for 190 mil travel, which for that lonely single crown, is a hell of a lot. With so many similarities in terms of dimensions, intentions and release timing, it was only fitting that we put them head to head to see how each one performs and if one stuck its larger diameter head in front of the other. The 38 is available in 150mm to 180mm travel options in both 27.5 and 29 wheel sizes. For the 27.5 there's a 37 or a 44mm offset and for the 29 there's a 44 or a 51mm offset. It comes in price options from 949 US dollars all the way up to 1199 US dollars. Our 29 inch factory 170 mil fork with an uncut steerer weighed 2458 grams. Fox's name is pretty easy to follow with the 38 referring to the diameter of the stanchions and this being their most noticeable change to the new fork. Slightly more hidden away though is an oval butted steerer tube designed to place more material at the front and back of the tube to help boost the stiffness under hard riding. There's a return of the floating axle, something that the 40 always had and all the 36s too. With either the QR axle or the bolt in cobalt, the hub is clamped against the brake side lower leg, leaving the other leg free to float on the axle via a tube spacer to find its perfect alignment. The idea being that a fork's friction shouldn't be at the mercy of hub tolerances and allowing the fork legs to be correctly aligned gives them the path of least resistance when in use. Fox also incorporated bleed valves on the back of the lower legs to purge any built up air either through big changes in elevation or air ingress through riding. They also double up as two of the mount points for the Fox mudguard. The lowers also have molded in channels to give the lower leg oil a chance to recirculate up to the foam rings sitting just under the wiper seals and lubricate the seals and bushings. With the onset of larger head tubes, either through design choices or the 1.8 inch lower headset standard, Fox offset the arch forward to ensure it would clear the frame at full travel no matter the bike it's fitted to. The 38 uses a 180mm post mount for the brakes with options that go all the way up to 230mm rotors by using adapters. Fork dimensions are easily available through the Fox Tech Help page on their website, but compared to the same Travel 36 from 2021, you're looking at a 3mm longer axle to crown, and compared to the 2020 36, it's 7mm longer. The air spring of the 38 is a bit different to the rest of Fox's single crown forks, with it using an inner tube inside the fork stanchions which then uses a smaller diameter piston than the 38mm diameter leg would suggest. This changes the compression and expansion ratios while also increasing the air volume that the lower legs take up, reducing their ramp up effect in the fork's overall performance. The air spring is tunable with snap-in volume spaces, with the maximum number varying on the travel of the fork, with shorter travel versions recommending more spaces to help the air spring ramp with the reduced travel. Max fork pressure is up at 140 psi. The 38 uses Fox's latest damper unit called Grip2. It offers high and low speed adjustment for both the compression and rebound. It also uses the newly designed adjusters to change the high speed compression and rebound, dubbed VVC or variable valve control. They use small propeller shaped plates that when turned via the adjuster, adjusts the fulcrum or pivot point, changing the mechanical leverage and effectively stiffening up the entire shim stack or valve behind it. 
The system uses seven clicks of adjustment to match Fox's new generation shocks that also use the same system of VVC. Low speed damping adjustments use a needle and orifice style arrangement to meter the oil flow through the valve and control the low speed compression and a rebound. The 38's damper is somewhat open bath, circulating damping fluid through the damper and into the lowers, meaning that the two systems use the same oil for lubrication and damping. This negates any problems with a sealed damper possibly ingesting the bath oil, becoming plump and affecting the fork performance. It also means that the lower on the damper side are lubricated by a lot more oil. The name Zeb comes from the explorer Zebulon Pike, who is famous around the Colorado Springs area that RockShox has their headquarters, but it too has 38mm diameter stanchions. The Zeb is available from 150 to 190mm travel in the same wheel sizes as a 38 and 44mm offset for the 27.5 version and a 44 and 51 offset for the 29 inch. It costs between 699 US dollars and 999 US dollars. Our 29 inch ultimate 180 mil travel with an uncut steerer came in at 2,274 grams. That's 184 grams lighter than our Fox 38. RockShox uses a torque end cap fitment for the hubs. While the hub width remains the same at 110 mil wide, the end cap surface contact is upped considerably to help with overall fork stiffness. Although you do need to use the end caps to get this benefit without, and you have to wiggle the hub around a bit to line it up to get the axle in. The Zeb uses a simpler bolt on axle with no floating system. Although every set of RockShox forks I've had, you need to splay the legs apart ever so slightly to get the hub to slide in, leaving me wondering if this is their method of mitigating a narrow hub width tolerance. The Zeb also offsets the arch to clear the large head tubes and uses a 200mm post mount for the brake. Even though the Zeb can go as low as 150mm travel, it's a bit more fitting to see the minimum rotor size is 200mm given the fork's stout intentions. Max rotor size is up at 220mm, and there's also a bolt-on fender available for the Zeb. Compared to the same travel lyric from 2021, the Zeb has a 5mm longer axle to crown, and compared to a 2020 lyric, 4mm longer. The Zeb uses a similar air spring design to the other RockShox fork, dubbed Debonair, but again the system found in the Zeb is a unique to it due to the piston diameter for the increased stanchion and the different negative volume defining part to adjust the positive to negative chamber ratio. The air spring is also tunable with spacers, but on the Zeb they screw in with the aid of an 8mm hex tool. There's even a dual position air spring version available, allowing a quick change in fork travel on the fly. Max pressure for the Zeb is up at 148 psi. The Zeb uses the Charger 2.1 sealed damper cartridge with adjustments for low speed rebound and high and low speed compression. Low speed adjustments use the same needle and orifice metering system with the high speed compression adjuster preloading the compression shim stack with four clicks of adjustment. RockShox say they work to bring the new Charger 2.1 damper adjustment window more aligned with what was needed in the real world, allowing people to potentially use the extremes of the clicks rather than have an extreme that would never be used by the public and racers alike. The 38 requires a few extra setup steps coming from the floating axle, but once done, it's set for that hub width when using the QR axle. The Cobalt uses the pinch bolt each time you have to take the wheel in and out and forgoes the tube spacer that you would use with the QR axle. Recommended settings are printed on the side of the fork, outputting air pressure and rebound clicks for various rider weight ranges. At 75 kilos all kitted up, it suggested 93 PSI with six clicks of low speed rebound and five of high speed. All clicks being measured from fully closed with the first click you encounter coming back being counted as one. The fork came with one volume spacer installed. RockShox also prints the recommended pressures on the side of the fork, but their sag markings printed on the stanchions make initial setup a doddle. They also have the online trailhead setup tool, either on the website or via the app. Inputting the fork's serial number on the back of the crown gives you access to fork information and documents, setup guides based on your weight and type of bike, plus all applicable service and upgrade kits for that fork. The fork sticker suggested 62 PSI, while the Trailhead app suggested a slightly softer 59 PSI setup with 9 clicks of rebound from fully closed. The fork came with zero fork spaces installed. I've been out testing both forks for the past 6 months in terrain ranging from the demanding steeps of Champery, Switzerland, to the fast root filled forests of Reschen in Italy, with everything in between being thrown the fork's way. Out of the box, the 38 took a few more times around the houses to get to a happy window, with it needing much more pressure than recommended, up at 105 psi, some 12 psi higher than the suggested settings. That up in pressure also needed a change to the rebound damping clicks to keep the bigger spring in check. 
whereas the Zeb ended up the closest to that recommended settings with me finding that happy window pretty quickly from those recommended settings. Both forks exhibit fantastic sensitivity and have maintained that throughout a whole summer and autumn season of riding, although I might be in trouble for not servicing them earlier. The Zeb feels like butter over the small hits and chatter and that left me removing it from my list of things to think about as I rode. The 38 matches this, but there's a touch more information coming through to your hands. Not in a bad way, and definitely not harshness, just a gnat's whisker more feeling than the Zeb. When those hits get bigger and the going gets rougher is where the forks become more separated in feel. The 38 gives the impression of riding lower in its travel, almost like you're missing a stem spacer from under your stem, whereas the Zeb keeps a higher ride height. On the flip side though, in these rough sections of trail is where the 38 then offers more composure than the Zeb, with it being efficient in its uses of travel with the repeated bigger impacts. The Zeb gives the feeling of more movement through the travel, which then needs a bit more body language from your arms to keep up with it. I tried more pressure in the 38, up at 110 and up at 115 psi, to try and help it ride higher, but was met with an increase in overall harshness even when reducing the amount of compression to account for the bigger spring. I also tried more compression with the same spring rate, but again the harshness increased and I found myself coming back again. Eventually set in at 3 tokens, 5 clicks of high speed rebound, 8 of low speed rebound, 3 of high speed compression and 10 of low speed compression. With the Zeb I tried more tokens in the fork as an experiment, but came back to the stock setting of zero, finding it to be the best balance of travel usage without hitting a wall of progression in the air spring. I eventually settled at 70 psi in the air spring, which calmed the fork's movement through its travel without bringing too much overall harshness into the equation. I settled at 9 clicks of rebound, 9 of low speed compression and 2 of high speed compression on the Zeb, giving me usable options in damping either way depending on the terrain or how hard I wanted to ride. When in that happy window, I could ride hard and happy with the fork, but just had to have the knowledge of more arm movement in the really rough sections of trail to help with the fork's character. For anyone with a boxer, they might know this feeling, although with the Zeb, that character trait is far less pronounced. In the steep trails, which are in abundance around this part of the Alps, both forks ride well and neither dives drastically while in the steeps or while grabbing a bunch of brakes from thinking you're 10 men and letting off them for a bit too long. That is though, with the 38 needing a higher bar height than the Zeb, but once the bar height is good, then the fork does offer good support even though it might be riding lower in its travel. I can appreciate some people will run the 38 with 180mm rotors, but given the intentions, it's a little fiddly to have to use adapters on the brake mount. The Zeb is just a bolt on and go. Another small point is that our Fox 38 ended up having more than the stated 7 clicks of adjustment, up at 9. With taking apart some of their rear shocks using the same VVC design, it could actually be a dead click when you go from turning one direction to the opposite. Fox suggests that you service the 38 every 125 hours or yearly, or if you live in extreme conditions or give it extreme use, then you should service it a bit sooner. There's a four digit code on the back of the fork, which in combination with the Fox website will bring up all service, specification and part drawing data. For the 38, it needs 40 mil of lower leg fluid in the damper leg and 20 mil in the air lower leg. It's a familiar scenario for working on the 38 for lower leg services, air spring swaps, for changing travel or for servicing, and they're no more difficult or any different than normal 36. Rockstock suggests a lower leg service every 50 hours and every 200 hours a damper and spring service. Searching on the website with the serial number on the back of the crown brings up all service and specification data along with recommended upgrade and service parts. In both lower legs, the Zeb needs 20 mil of oil. The RockShox Zeb is the same as all other RockShox forks to service for the lower legs and air spring changes are familiar and simple. Picking a victor between the two forks is no easy task, with each fork having lovable traits in their character that I cherish. And while neither fork is perfect, the ride arounds for each of them is neither problematic nor a hindrance. I've been switching backwards and forwards between which one I prefer, usually with that aligning with which one is bolted to the front of the bike that I'm riding. Both the 38 and the Zeb are excellent offerings for this long travel, aggressive single crown fork. But bringing in the factors of price, weight, and setup alongside performance, it's the RockShox Zeb that sticks its nose slightly ahead of the 38. It's a cheaper and lighter package than the 38, and with setup, it got me to a happy place in those settings far faster and with much more ease than the 38. And that for me counts for a lot. Those recommended settings that RockShox give you being far closer to the final settings that I had when testing had finished. The performance of the 38 is top notch and its composure on trail while remaining supple is a tiny bit ahead of the Zeb. 
But that's not enough with all things considered, and it did take more tinkering to find that happy window of setup compared to the Zeb. Something that people with less understanding of suspension and tuning might take longer to find, or may not even find at all. Especially with the 38 settings at the end of testing being so far away from the initial settings that Fox suggested. There will always be diehard fans of Fox and RockShox alike, and if you like a fork that is supple and feels like it's working away underneath you, then the Zeb would be right up your street. On the other hand, if you like your forks to have a bit more of a stuck to the ground feeling and have more tinkering options, then the 38 might be what you're after. But after many months testing in many different terrains and conditions, and with the editorial gun to my head, it's with the RockShox Zeb that I find the winner. Like this matchup? Don't agree with the verdict? Perhaps just want to skip all the information and go straight to voicing your opinion? Then let us know what you think in the comments.